So in patients with Gorlin syndrome, many patients that I've seen over the years are incredibly isolated. They're isolated because um, you know, nobody else has this type of skin condition. They don't have the scars on their face. And over time, a lot of our Gorlin syndrome patients, because they don't have any other treatments, um, become even isolated from the medical community. So one thing that has been very helpful in removing this isolation and connecting patients and their families is the um, patient advocacy group known as Basal Cell Nevis Syndrome Support Group. They have a Facebook page, they have a Twitter account, uh, they're online, and I would encourage patients to get connected with the patient advocacy, advocacy group um, to get enrolled in the BCNS or Gorlin Syndrome Patient Registry. This is something you can actively do right now because the patient advocacy group will send information about clinical trials in their newsletters, in their you know, annual or um, semi-monthly emails, and that's the way for you to get enrolled in a registry uh, to make your opinion and to declare you know, that you are a patient and to show up as a number to, un to let the world understand you know, how common is Gorlin syndrome and to stay informed with the clinical trials. You might ask uh, Gorlin syndrome, how prevalent is it? is it? It is a rare disease, so only one in approximately 30,000 patients um, have Gorlin syndrome. Sometimes it's picked up with genetic testing. Sometimes it's picked up because patients have jaw cysts that present in their teenage years, and sometimes it presents as having multiple BCC, basal cell carcinoma, in their teens and their 20s.